Engineers solving problems. This video is why do we use the engineering design process to create a technological system? Well, the major thing is the engineering design process is a strategic problem solving strategy. So this is a game plan. This allows us to go through each step so we don't miss anything while we're making a design. And while in our class we're not building anything super high tech, in the future you may be in charge of some kind of problem at work. Well, this also works for solving everyday issues like what's for supper? Well, there's your problem. You can brainstorm on places to eat. You can research for ideas. What are your criteria and constraints? I don't want fried fish. Well, Cabin D's is out. All right, so those are some criteria constraints. The criteria might be, I want a hamburger. So that would make Chick-fil-A out, by the way. Exploring possibilities takes into account your criteria and constraints. Yes, maybe when you research for ideas, Chick-fil-A, Cap'n D's might have come up. I don't want fish is a constraint or it could be a criteria. Depends on how you define them. We'll get into that later. The criteria might be, I want a hamburger. So a constraint would be more towards monetary things like, I don't want to spend $50. Well, Texas Roadhouse would be out. So you, when you explore possibilities, you look for what meets your criteria and constraints. Chick-fil-A doesn't have a hamburger, so that doesn't meet it. So that's not a possibility. We're pretty much stuck with Burger King now. They have a burger. They don't, you're not going to get fish from there. All right, so then you select an approach. So Burger King, McDonald's, those places, those would fit your possibilities. Um, if you're trying to go on a budget, you might go McDonald's dollar menu. That is your approach. One, you can only eat at one place in this particular problem. All right, so then you develop a design proposal. Now, if we're going out to eat, a design proposal is probably going to be along the lines of how do we get there? You're going to ride a bike, you're going to walk, you're going to take the bus, you're going to call a cab. That's your design proposal. You say, hey, we're going to take 10 bucks, feed the family, dollar menu at McDonald's, hop in the family van, let's go. Now, at this point, building a prototype doesn't exactly work. Talking about food, unless you're going to make it yourself. Um, so as we go through this plan, the reason it's here is it's strategic. It gives us a plan that's in order and been worked out so that when you get to the end to communicate results and you say, hey, McDonald's was great, dollar menu burgers, boom. Um, back in my day, they, you could have got them for 59 cents though, just saying. Uh, we start with a problem. Let's say you need to build the best paper airplane. What's the problem? We need to build an airplane that can fly the farthest. Let's brainstorm. What kind of ideas can we come up with? Should it use printer paper, copy paper, um, any kind of other paper? I mean, I can't. Poster board. Research for ideas. I'm not a paper airplane expert. I'm going to the internet. I'm going to look for some ideas. Then criteria and constraints. Well, I'm going to put a constraint that says for your paper airplane, you have to use copy paper because I have tons of it. Scrap paper scrap copy paper. That is a constraint. I'm not allowing you to use anything else. Your criteria, it can't be cut. That might also be a constraint, but again, that's not the purpose of this video. We'll, we'll lay that out later. All right, explore possibilities. Now at this point with your criteria and constraints, if it's a glider, that that's not going to meet your your uh, distance that you're trying to go for distance then you select one approach okay I pick the dart now you develop a design proposal how do you make it that's what you're gonna put in your engineering notebook is how do you make this paper airplane and then you're gonna build a prototype and test it when you build that prototype and you test it does it function like you want it does it go as far as you want it to go if it doesn't you've got to make a modification after this test and evaluate you have to refine your design. You might have to go back up here. You may have to alter your criteria and constraints. 
you might have to find more ideas so that you can narrow them back down again and explore possibilities and select a different approach. Then you can go back and do your design proposal again, yes, again. Sometimes you have to go through this several times before you have something that makes you happy, that meets your original goal, which when we define a problem, we set a SMART goal. We want a paper airplane to go the farthest distance. If you're going for a uh, glider, you might want to say for the longest flight time is your goal. So you take this test and evaluate, hold it up to that SMART goal, does it meet it? Does it satisfy the requirements of everything? Will it make your customer happy to buy your paper airplane? And then something we don't do, we don't really create or make anything. Um, everything that we do is a prototype. We're not going to mass produce paper airplanes. If you were in a manufacturing business, tech business, when you create or make, that is your actual product. And then you communicate results. And we always communicate results, whether that be in our engineering notebook or a des uh, oh, having a, a brain freeze here. A presentation in class. We might present what we find with our information that we have in our engineering notebook and after our testing and evaluation. And we'll come together and see, does everything work like it should? Did, did other people experience pro the same problems or successes that you did? And that's when we communicate results. In a business, that might be marketing. You may have to put something out to sell it. So the reason that we use this is it's strategic. It's our game plan. It is what we're going to do and follow to make our designs. And throughout our class this year, this is going to be used weekly. We are always going to go through these steps, so be familiar with them. Know them inside and out. They're broken up into three sections, the concept, the design, and the evaluation. Concept, design, evaluate, CDE, and that is the order that we go in. You can simplify some of them and group them. You'll find that the 12-step engineering design process is not what everybody uses. Some people use a five-step. Some people use a six step and some people have a seven step, depending on what they group together. You might put researching and brainstorming together. Well, now we're down to 11. Take this one out, 10. Take this one out, nine steps. So just learn these 12 steps and know where they fall in the order and you will be a success in this class.